Hello everyone, welcome to another second step lesson. So today we're gonna start off with another game of clap and wait. We played this game last week, but this week we are going to add one new rule, okay? So to go over the rules again, rule number one is to watch and count the number of claps and waits that I do. You can use your self-talk to keep track out loud, but quietly or in your head. Rule number two, is you have to wait until I say, ready, set, go. And then you can do the pattern. You can do the claps and the weights. And lastly, rule number three, this is our new rule, is this time we're going to do the pattern in reverse order, okay? So meaning we're gonna do it backwards. So that's gonna mean that this game is gonna be a little bit harder than it was last week. And we're gonna have to really have our attentoscopes on and pay attention to the patterns. Okay, so Miss Brianna's gonna start off with an example. So let's say um, I'll do clap, clap, wait, wait. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, awesome job, my friends. So since we're doing it in reverse order, it should be wait, wait, clap, clap. Awesome job. I know that can be a little tricky and confusing, but we're gonna keep going, okay? Um, Let's do, let me think for a minute. Let's do, let's do clap, wait, clap, wait, clap. Ready, set, go. Good job to my friends paying attention. Okay, awesome job. So this one is kind of funny because it's the same forward and backwards. So it's clap, wait, clap, wait, clap. Good job. Okay, let's think of another one. Um, what if I do... Wait, wait, clap, wait, wait, clap, wait. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, awesome job, my friends. I know this is a little bit harder. So backwards, this would be wait, clap, wait, wait, clap, wait, wait. Oh, that's confusing, even for Miss Brianna. That's a little confusing. Okay, last one. We will do clap, clap, clap. Wait, wait, wait. Clap, wait. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, awesome job, my friends. I know this is a little bit harder. So I, if Miss Brianna remembers correctly, it's wait, clap, wait, 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 clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Doing it backwards is hard, huh? Well, give you guys yourselves a pat on the back. I know I'm gonna give myself a good pat on the back, double pat on the back, because that was hard. That was hard to remember. Okay, well, last time, we're gonna go into our review now. So last time you learned what to say when something happens by accident. So who remembers what you say when something by accident happens? Think about it for a minute. Hmm. There were three things, I'm gonna give you a hint, three things that Miss Brianna said that we can say when an accident happens. Hmm. Okay, Miss Brianna remembers that when accidents happen, we can say, I'm sorry, it was an accident. Are you okay? Awesome job to my friends who remembered. If you remember to pat your head like this, awesome job. So those are the three things that we can tell someone um, when an accident happens. So apologizing or saying, I'm sorry, 
is a way of showing that you care. Today, you'll learn more about showing others that you care, okay? So we're gonna bring in, I think we're gonna bring in Snail and Puppy today, okay? So I will be right back. Okay, we're gonna bring in our friend Snail. Snail, you wanna come in? Hello, everyone. Hi, Snail. What's going on? Hmm, some other snails made fun of my show. I have a bandage on it where I fell and hurt it, and they said it looks dumb. I feel embarrassed and sad. Look, here comes Puppy. Woof, hi, Snail. I heard what those other snails said. That wasn't very nice, woof. I wouldn't have liked it if they teased me that way. Would you like to sit with me at lunch today? Woof. Sure, thanks, puppy. It's nice to know that someone understands. Well, thanks, puppy. Thanks for showing that you care about Snail. That's very kind of you. Okay, well, thank you guys. We're gonna say goodbye to puppy and Snail now, okay? Bye, everyone. Woof. Bye. Okay, so we are going to get into our story time. So here is our photo for today. Miss Brianna's going to put it close up so you guys can see. So this is Dara and this is Ben. Okay, everybody see Dara and Ben? Okay, so it was show and tell time. Ben was excited to tell the class about his special shell, but he started to hiccup. Someone started laughing and Ben felt embarrassed. He went and sat down without telling the class all the things he had wanted to say. Ben's friend Dara came over to see him. Okay, and that's where we see in this photo. There's Dara coming to Ben. Okay, so think about how Ben feels. So let me zoom in. Let me show you guys Ben. Let's look at him. What do you think that Ben feels? Think about that for a moment. Hmm. Miss Brianna remembers when she read the story, Ben felt embarrassed, right? And when you, he felt embarrassed that he started to hiccup and someone laughed at him. Sorry. Yeah, what else does he feel? He looks sad. He looks pretty upset when he's talking to Dara right now. So how can we tell? Looking at this picture, how can we tell? Remember our three clues. Well, let's start first with the face. Let's look at Ben's face here. His eyebrows are sad. They're pointed like this, like in. They're sad. He's looking down at the floor or maybe at his shell that he's holding. Can't really tell where his eyes are, but you can tell he's looking down. His face looks sad, right? He looks really sad and upset. He just does not look happy at all, right? He looks really sad. And our next clue, let's look at his body. So looking at his body, look how he's slouched over like that. See how he's slouching? He's not sitting up straight. He's holding a shell and again, he's looking down. He has his head down like that. And last, let's look at the situation. So what we know happened. So understanding the whole situation, he probably, probably know that he feels sad and embarrassed because he was, he hiccuped in front of the whole class, right? And then someone laughed at him. So that's not a good feeling, right? When you're in front of everybody and you do something that's embarrassing or something happens and it's embarrassing and people laugh, that's not a good feeling all the time, right? Okay, yeah. So I want you to raise your hand like this if you thought the same thing. Awesome job, my friends. Good job. Using our clues to help us understand how people might feel. Okay, so now let's go to Dara. 
Let's look at Dara for a minute here. So here's Dara with Ben. How do you think Dara feels? Think about that. Well, Miss Brianna thinks that Dara probably is concerned for Ben, right? She's being a good friend. She's, she came to Ben, right? She saw that he was sad, so she came over to him. So obviously she, she's um, concerned about him. Maybe she also feels like she's sad for Ben. Maybe she saw what happened and she knows like it's not fun to get laughed at. So she feels sad for him maybe. And how can we tell this? Let's look at her. Let's look at Dar Dara. And how can we tell that she, maybe she feels sad for Ben or concerned about him, right? So let's look at her face. She's Look at where her eyes are looking. They're looking right at Ben, right? She's trying to see if he's okay. She also has her hand like this. She doesn't look... She doesn't look sad, like really sad, but she also looks kind of worried for her friend. Like she in her hand, looking at her body. We see that her hand is on Ben, like she's trying to comfort him and telling him, it's okay, Ben. And she's also kind of um, doing the same thing Ben's doing, hold, holding her hand in her head, looking at Ben, trying to, you know, Get him to look at her or see what he's looking at, right? And then, of course, the situation. We know that Dar Dara came over to Ben, right? She was the first one to walk over to him to see how he was doing. So let's look at the photo. Think about what Dara could say to show Ben that she cares. So think about that. What could Dara say to Ben to show that she cares? Hmm. Okay, this can be kind of difficult, right? This is something that's a little bit harder. But um, let's think about it for a minute. So what could Dara say to make Ben feel better and let him know that she cares? Well, Miss Brianna thinks that she could tell, Dara could tell Ben, um, she could ask him about, she could ask him about his shell and ask him to explain it more and he can say all the things that he didn't say in front of the class. So she could say, tell me more about your shell. I wanna know more about your shell. Can you tell me about it? Um, she could also tell him that she's sorry that someone laughed at him, right? She could say, I'm sorry, Ben. I know that person laughed at you. That wasn't very nice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened to you, even though it wasn't her fault, but she can still just tell Ben that she's sorry, or maybe she could say, I know how you feel. I'm sorry. So those are some things that Dara could say to help Ben feel better. Or maybe she could tell him, hey, I thought your shell was really cool. Right? So she could give him a compliment about his shell and what he was sharing with the class. Awesome job, my friend. So these are all things that Dara could have told Ben, right? So Dara listened to Ben tell her more about his special shell. Listening is one way Dara can show she cares about Ben. Saying kind words or offering to help are other ways. Awesome. So she's showing her concern for Ben, right? And we can show our concern for others by listening. So listening to what they have to say if they're feeling bad. Maybe they want to tell you that they're feeling bad or um, tell you about what's going on or whatever it is that they're sad about. Like, like Dara was listening to Ben um, tell her more about his shell. So you can listen. Another way you can show concern is saying kind words, right? So if Dara could tell Ben, oh, that's so cool. I like your shell. I think that's really cool. Those are kind words. Or, or Ben, you're very, um, you're very, 
kind or oh you been you spoke so nicely about your shell so those are kind words that Dara could share um and lastly offering to help she could ask Ben oh Ben I'm so sorry how can I help you is there anything I can do for you what can I do for you Awesome. Okay. So remember listening, saying kind words and offering to help. Those are things that we can do to show someone that we're concerned about them and that we care about them. Right? Okay. How do you feel when people show you that they care? Think about that for a minute. How do you feel when someone shows you that they care for you? It can be your friends, it can be your mom, your dad, your siblings, grandma, grandpa. Think about it. Hmm. Well, Miss Brianna, she always feels happy, right? She always feels happy when um, my friends and my family show me that they care about me. Um, I feel glad. I feel relieved sometimes, especially maybe if I mess up or I make a mistake or an accident happens. So people showing that they care for me, that can make me feel happy and relieved. So showing care and concern for someone is called compassion. Compassion. So compassion is an is empathy in action okay so empathy is when you feel and you understand what someone's going through but compassion is doing something about it so you feel empathy but compassion is when you do something so we're going to remember that important word okay compassion Okay, and now we're going to get into our last um, activity for this lesson. Okay, so we are going to practice showing compassion. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that someone is in front of us. And we are going to think of something to say or do to show compassion to that other person who may be having uncomfortable feelings. So remember that listening, saying kind words and helping are three ways that we can show compassion. So listening, saying kind words, and helping. Okay, so Miss Brianna is going to give a scenario, an example, and I want you to think about what you would say to that person. Okay, so pretend like someone's in front of you and there, this is what's happening to them. And you're going to think about ways that you can show how to be compassionate, okay? So let's say, or you can pretend it's me, okay? And pretend that you tell, you're talking to me. So let's say um, Miss Brianna feels disappointed about not getting a turn on the swings before recess ended. Let's say Miss Brianna really wanted to get on those swings, she was so excited about getting on those swings, but I didn't get to have my turn on the swings by the time that recess ended. So what would you say to Miss Brianna to show her compassion? Think about that for a minute. I'll give you some time to think. Hmm. Okay, well, Miss Brianna's thinking of some ideas. And if it were someone else who was disappointed about the swings, I would tell them, I'm sorry you're disappointed because you didn't get your turn on the swings. Next recess, you can go on the swings before me. So that's something kind and compassionate, right? So you're telling that you're giving them kind words and you're helping them by letting them know that they can go on the swings next recess. So those are some things to say. Um, let's say, let's do another example. Let's say, hmm, let's say Miss Brianna 
is feeling worried because she has a doctor's appointment to go to. Hmm. Miss Brianna's really scared of the doctors and she's nervous and she's worried about going to the doctors. So what would you say to Miss Brianna to make her um, feel better and to show compassion? Think. Hmm. Okay, well, Miss Brianna would maybe um, tell someone who was scared of the doctor. Um, I would say, it's okay. You don't have to be scared of the doctor. I would, I could say, it's okay. It's okay to feel nervous. How about you can tell your mom that you feel nervous or your dad or whoever's taking you to the doctors? Or you could say, or how about you take a stuffed animal or something that you like that you can hold while you're at the doctors? So those are some things that, so I'm trying to share a kind word and then I'm also trying to give them help by telling them what they can do to make themselves feel better, right? Okay, let's do one last example. Let's say, let's say Miss Brianna feels embarrassed because she slipped down the stairs and everybody saw her slip down the stairs. So what would you say to Miss Brianna to show compassion? Hmm. Hmm. Well, Miss Brianna would say to someone who fell down the stairs, this is what I would say, I would be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that you fell down the stairs. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Next time I can walk with you down the stairs. Or you can ask them, can I help you? Is there anything I can help you with? Do you need a Band-Aid? Maybe they got hurt. Or you can ask them, do you want me to walk with you? Because maybe sometimes they're feeling embarrassed and like no one's, like they're gonna have to go walk alone. So you can ask to go with them, right? Awesome. Well, these are just some ideas, okay, that Miss Brianna is sharing. But you guys can maybe come up with other ideas that Miss Brianna did not share today that are also showing compassion and being kind, right? Awesome job, my friends. Well, to wrap up, today we learned ways to show care and concern or the big word, compassion. What are three things you can say and do to show compassion. Who remembers? Hmm. Put a thumbs up if you remember. Awesome job, my friends. So we can listen, say kind words, and help. Yes, those are three things. Awesome. So our words and actions can make a difference when friends are upset. It makes our school more fun when we care about each other and how a person feels. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, my friends. And I will see you again next week. Bye.